Hey, it's Dr. Matt from Live Spring Chiropractic in Austin, Texas. We are here today with Mary Joy. Mary Hi. Joy is an Austin balayage expert here in Austin. And what's going on? Tell us what you're experiencing or what brings you in. Um, right now I have issues with my left hip and my left ankle and also my mid upper back has been bothering me a lot lately. So she spends a lot of time as a hairstylist on her feet, yes. Yes. <laughs> and in, I'd say, less than ideal position with Yeah, I'm always in this position and I'm wearing heels like 90% of the time, which and, is not good. <laughs> and so, and you previously had bouts of, when I first met you, numbness in your hands mm -hmm. also, right? So yeah. a common thing that we see, many times lay people will call it carpal tunnel syndrome because it is numbness in the hands. That usually though is coming from the nerves in the neck and most of the time associated with this right here. So we pan up to the wall, tech neck. It doesn't have to just be technology with our head forward that's putting so much strain on our neck, agitating those nerves that go down into the arms. It can be something occupationally like hair, like leaning forward or having our arms out for long periods of time. So let's look at your neck motion first. We'll have you look down for me as far as you can. Good, and then look up all the way as high as you can. Good. So she's got a lot of motion with looking up almost more than we like to see. Do you pop your own neck at all? Yes. Yeah. So that's the first <laughs> question I ask. And when I watch other chiropractors on YouTube, seeing people that have too mobile of a neck, we call it a hypermobile neck, I cringe because with that, you have to be really specific on the spots on the neck you're going to adjust because you don't want to make it more mobile in the wrong ways. So with that too i just wanted to show it because usually with that there'll be a problem in the upper back and in the upper neck it's typically the middle part of the neck that's too mobile so let's start you face down please and i'm gonna feel her spine and what's up with your ankle you mentioned it to me off camera right what yeah What's going on with it? I know every time I wake up early in the morning, my ankle is just in pain. I can't rotate it. I can't stand on it. Okay, so we'll look at the ankle at okay. the end also. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the spine first here. So looking down at the leg length, we look at leg length because it tells us more about positioning of the pelvis. So when I bring the legs there, the left leg is significantly shorter than the right leg. And then when I bring them up here, that left one goes long. And then when we bring the leg standalone up here, it'll put a little bit of stress on this SI joint right there. So Mary, does that hurt when I do that? Mm, no, but I feel something. Like pressure, would you say almost? Mm, yeah. How about with this? No. Okay. And then when I roll the leg out also, anything there? Yes. Okay, where do you feel that? More than um, hip? Yeah, like up here. Okay. And then how about when I lift the leg up here also? Nothing. Nothing there. Okay, so we'll do a series of these, and I just wanted to show that just a little bit. I already know since we've been working together, but that's putting different stressors on the joint in a different way. We call them orthopedic tests, and that one where I roll the leg out, that hibs is what it's called, is just stressing this outer part of the joint, so she feels it when we do that. That left leg is short, telling us also that this hip bone on this side has dropped back. So that's the primary one for her that we've been working on. And many times what we'll notice is people standing for long periods will just start to get fatigued when there's a problem there. Do you notice that too when you're, okay. when you're doing hair? Yes. Yeah, so feeling for motion through there and it's definitely, I'm sure that's a little tender when I'm mm -hmm. pushing around. So same thing all the way up the spine feeling for motion and again here and she was mentioning even off camera that she's feeling something between her shoulder blades so we'll typically point to muscles when we feel something on our own body muscles attached to bone though so if there's a problem with the joint those muscles are going to pull tight and that's why she's feeling it through here on both sides that doesn't mean we need to crack everything sorry youtubers but only find that specific one and for her it's right there and that might be tender and I'm coming to it by looking for positioning of the bone, movement of the bone, and the muscles surrounding it. So we'll start with the low back. Let's have you on your side, please, facing me like you're sleeping. And then I'm gonna bend that top leg. We'll keep the bottom straight. She already knows, she's I'm done trained. this before. <laughs> so I'm gonna roll her toward me with a little bit at the end, and she trusts me, good, let that go. 
Good. And then let's have you go face down for the okay. please. I want to recheck that. She knows how I usually adjust her mid-back. She was ready for the next mm -hmm. one. And there we go. So that was a significant change there with the leg length. And then when I bring them up also, they're even in that position as well. And then I'm gonna do what I had done before, knowing that this was increasing that strain on the pelvis. Do you, how does that feel this time? It feels so much better the second you did it. Is it not pulling as much, not as much pressure? It just doesn't feel like it's painful at all? Yeah, it doesn't feel like anything anymore. Good, that's what we want. So we're gonna make an adjustment here between the shoulder blades. That's the fourth bone down in the mid back and it's rotated. We call it the spinous process is rotated to that right side. But to do it, it's everyone's spine is different. So with it being a flatter mid back, instead of having a big curve through there, it's typically more comfortable to have it adjusted a different way. So let's have you turn onto your back for me, please, and we'll make an adjustment this way. So we use so many techniques, we go fast through it, so sometimes it may look like we're doing the same thing, but we really vary it based off someone's spinal curves or preference. And for her, this is a good example of that. If you watch my other videos, you know I, I don't do this one as much. I'm special. <laughs> She's special. <laughs> Right there, big breath in for me, please. Good, let it all go. There. <laughs> How does it feel? Does that hurt at all? No, it feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then with the neck, any problems lately that you felt? No, really, the, it was the mid back and the hip. Okay. So you're happy then already? Yeah. <laughs> so much better. Good. Yeah, so when I feel through the middle part of her neck, it's too mobile. It's hypermobile. So if I were just to take her neck and quickly introduce motion into the middle of her neck, it'd actually make her worse. So this is where specificity is so important. Chiropractic is nothing without specificity. And we get better results the more specific we are. So we're gonna be on, again, this is actually the top bone in the upper back that we're gonna be on, and it's right there. So, T1 for all you nerds out there, chin slightly up. That was loud. <laughs> <laughs> again, did it hurt at all? Mm -mm. Good. Okay, we're gonna check out the foot now. So what do you, did you injure your foot recently at all? Mm -mm. So what are you experiencing? What are you feeling? Like whenever I rotate my ankle inward or just for some reason, there's a lot of pain over here in the mornings. So down on the inside, yeah. does it hurt? Do you get cramps down in the arch also or no? No. Okay. So what I see when someone's tracing it, again, she's tracing the line of specific muscles. So that was the posterior tibialis that she was tracing and to me, that means something. So we're gonna do a few muscle tests to your ankle and to the foot so we can figure out which joints are the cause okay. and then we'll adjust it. Cool. I'll have you lie all the way back for me, please. We're just gonna look at range of motion first. So I'm gonna bring it up into that dorsiflexion and then all the way down into plantar flexion and then same on this side, all the way up and all the way down. This one glides easier. Do you feel that, Mary? Mm -hmm. It moves that way a lot easier. Yeah. And I want you to move it on your own up in that direction as far as you can. Does one feel harder than the other? Do it again for me, please. Okay, this one moves less on this. I don't know if you feel it. When I don't you feel it, I don't know. when you move them up, yeah. So motion in the joint tells us a lot about the health of the joint and our body gives us little signs. Pain's usually the last one. A loss of motion is typically the first. So let's start doing a few months and then right there also. Mm -hmm. That might be a little tender. Mm -hmm. That's the cuboid that I'm palpating or feeling, this bone on the outside of the foot. So I'm gonna make a couple corrections, but first I do want to muscle test. Are you popping your own foot too? No. Okay, it just feels really mobile through right there. <laughs> so let's have you hold the foot up and out like that. I'm gonna try to pull it down and in, don't let me. Okay, okay good, and then I'm gonna hold it down and in, I'm gonna to try to push it up and out, don't let me. Okay, not as much there, I don't know if you feel that. Mm -hmm. And then that makes me wanna check her knee actually. A little tender there? Mm -mm. Okay. When I move my foot that inward like that though, it hurt. 
Where did it hurt? On the outside of the foot? Yeah, not yeah. on the inside of the foot. On the inside of the foot, yeah. okay. Yeah, and right there is actually where we're gonna make an adjustment to. It's not moving correctly. Is that tender? Yep, that's the part that hurts. <laughs> that's called the navicular. So, for all you nerds out there, I don't think Mary cares what it's called, do you? <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> and then also underneath it, her heel just has no movement. So we're gonna start moving things. This heel moves much better. The first one is gonna be the calcaneus or the heel. A little more. There we go. And that gets really jammed up. So sometimes it takes a lot of force to move that. There we go. Now it's back underneath where it should be. And then to get the rest of the ankle, that one on top right there, the talus. Good. And then the cuboid out here on the side. Good. So all of them moving really nicely. Sorry for you crack addicts. They don't always make noise. <laughs> See if usually through the midfoot is where we hear more noise and right there for you. Any tenderness there? Mm -hmm. On top? No? Good. It's a problem now. It needs to move. So we're gonna bring it down. There we go. And then this is the one that's aggravating right now the most. Right there. So two things. Good. Now I'm gonna bend the leg. It's a medial navicular, so this bone here has moved toward the midline, so I'm gonna drop it almost straight down. Just relax your leg, Mary, a little push at the end there. There it is. There. And now the heel should even move a little more, a little easier, there we go. So again, we don't always have noise with the foot, but just feeling for a change in motion in the joints, and that's what we have. So let's have you bring your foot down and in. Does that feel different when it, when you hold oh it there? Oh my God, so much less painful. Less painful, and you move better too. Let's, yeah. ha let's have you hold it there now, and I'm gonna try to push up and out, don't let me. Hold. Okay, so it's still not as good as it should be, and that's where I'm thinking, it's right here. Right there. And there's no tenderness there, huh? Mm -hmm. At that one? Okay. So I'm gonna make an adjustment to this is the fibular head. Joint line's a little different on this, so I'm gonna pull straight back toward me and down. There it is. Now let's have you hold the foot down and then I'm gonna push up and out, don't let me. There. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to you with that change it's, for people watching? <laughs> oh, I feel so much like more relieved. I can't wait to stand and not Did you feel stronger too when you yeah. held it? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, totally. So that's why I was laughing, because yeah. there was no strength yeah. at first and now you can hold it. So this ankle's good. I want to check the other one though also, because typically there's things even unnoticed on the foot opposite from where we're feeling it. So the heel first, there, there. There you crack addicts, you got one. <laughs> There, that's that first joint, there we go. And this foot is moving a lot better and easier to get moving as well. There's one more on top right there. Second and third metatarsals. There they go. Yeah, now they're gliding. Perfect, let's have you stand and walk, please. And for everyone watching at home, okay. after you take a few steps, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. have you explain maybe maybe for someone, especially within your industry, uh, who's never seen a chiropractor, how would something like this, how would you describe it to, to them? Um, I think it's so necessary for someone who's always straining their back. Like you always need to stay aligned and you always need to keep healthy so you can perform better at work too. So, so. I mean, what do you notice when you're at work too with it? Like, do you feel like your stamina, at least for standing for longer periods is better? Yeah, or? I feel like my posture is better when I stand. I'm more aware of my posture now that I'm like always seeing Matt, <laughs> you know? And I'm more aware of like, when I feel something in my body, I know I need to see, to, I need to see Matt or Scott because I know there's some something out of alignment. Awesome, yeah. cool. So thanks for watching and that's great advice also, listening to your body. The sooner we take action for anything that when we feel it, the better off we are. I'm gonna show one exercise too that uh, I've given Mary Joy here to do on her own and we're gonna re-show it on camera. It's a common thing that we do for someone with tech neck. So I'm gonna pan over here. I'll do it first and then I'll have you do it. So it's a wall angel. So holding the head back against the wall, shoulders back and down also. And then from here, slow and controlled, 
and just coming up like that. So we're gonna do a few of those. We'll have you do it. And we're working more of the muscles in the mid back and just retraining posture with this. Yeah, so hands up and then down, good. Yeah, and you should feel that between your shoulder blades and your mid back, kind of exactly where you were experiencing that painful spot. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it there when you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good at home exercise for people as well out there who also might be suffering from tech neck or just tension in their neck or in their mid back. This is a good exercise for everyone. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to watch more, click the subscribe button below. Make sure to leave the comments, and if you have a video you'd like us to make, we're open to doing it. Just let us know what you want to see. Yeah! Mm. <laughs> <laughs>